Oh, welcome back everyone. I know it's been a while since I've updated you guys. I have been absolutely slammed at work. And after work I come home to this place, which is a 2080 square foot project. And <laughs> it's kind of like that. Um, it, it's really it's just every day there's something there's something there's something and then how last weekend I had to go to my my parents house and help them out because my father's house is about three times older than this one and <laughs> it needs way more work so um, I've been helping him out um, as he's helped me uh, you know as well so it's you know it's just I don't have time for YouTube. It, it's really getting to be like uh, a nuisance at this point. But I will get back in the groove, I assure you, once I get my head above water. Um, I live in New England. It's a lovely place to live, but the weather is unpredictable. And our summers are short and winters are long. And when it gets into the winter months, there's really only so many things you can do because it could snow or freeze and it just it's not a conducive environment to doing well exterior household maintenance uh, which is what I've been doing mostly for the past three months the good news is the house is starting to look good actually it's looking really good I'm getting curb appeal back and uh, you know so that's that's helpful but what's not ha what's what's bad the, the side effect of that is all the other crap that I love to do isn't getting done. Um, so, for example, I've got this drill press here, this 1930s Delta drill press. It's a beautiful piece of equipment, but it needs help and lots of it. Um, so, I've got it to a state of basic functionality at this point. It actually does run, um, but it needs to be taken down and cleaned. And I'm not going to restore this. I'm going to just repair it and make it look pretty again. And that's about it. I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just going to dismantle some parts of it. We're going to repaint it. We're going to rewire it again. I, I did a shitty job wiring it. I'm using Christmas tree extension cord wiring. I'll get something a little better, something oil resistant. I've decided I'm going to keep this <laughs> this motor. It does run. Uh, we got to put a belt on it. Um, it's a Golf G44. Does that mean it was sold by the Golf gas station company back in the day? I don't know. But it needs a new belt. Um, we're going to clean it up. I, I just got a chuck key ordered for it. Um, overall, though, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, it just looks bad. Somebody had some chowdering on that uh, base. I even found this really cool Dayton foot pedal for it at Savers, of all places. But anyway, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to do some work to this. Uh, just not today. I've, I've got some other stuff I want to do today. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this thing does run, and I'm going to uh, actually have a, where did I put it? I have a, a, an old, uh, I think it's a shift knob. <laughs> I'm going to mount to this with JB Weld. And, oh yeah, we're, 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 not gonna, we're not looking for perfection. I just want it to look decent and be functional again as a proper tool. And it looks like, so I set the shift knob thing down because I was playing with this thing last night, getting it to, I was drilling holes in wood with it just for fun. And the cats got to the shift knob and batted it around and now I don't know where the hell it is. I had it on the floor and the little four-legged bastards just took it from me. Ah, you suck. Do you know how long it's gonna take me to find that damn thing? Anyway, unless it's on here on this cart. Unless the old lady put it on the cart. No, she did not. Um, so anyway, now, I, oh, oh, there it is. I lied. I lied. I blamed the cats. It was really my fault the whole time. So, yeah. This is going to be the new, uh, <laughs> the knob. It doesn't fit. And I, and I don't know if, it, is that a shift knob? No, that's from something else. But yeah, it, it just, I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to jury rig it and we're going to make it work because I, you know what, whatever, life's too short for perfection. So let's look at 
the project that we want to start today. So I think where we left off, this was the um, the Delco fan that I got from a coworker. Um, and I think where we left off is we were starting the disassembly process, getting a good look at it, see what kind of work it might need. And I think what I want to do today is we want to kind of continue on and uh, we're going to just take the motor off, take it apart, get it prepped for paint. I'm going to actually use a, um, I'm going to have to somehow protect this data plate. We don't want to get any, uh, any paint stripper on this because it would ruin the printing. But what I want to do with this right now is just sort of get it taken apart and uh, see see about getting it uh, at least some of the paint taken off. So I went to the hardware store and I picked up some paint, some paint stripper. Now I want to point out, and I, I mentioned this in the previous video, sorry for the jumpiness here, but this particular fan is one of the easier ones to work on because it has a very simplified wiring system. Yes, we have mice, but that's okay. I've hired two mouse police officers and they are on the prowl. Okay, what do we got? So first of all, we want to save this old plug. So I'm going to unwire this plug and we're going to uh, preserve it. So yeah, this fan does run. Um, sounds pretty good. But, you know, as, as, uh, come out. Screw it a little more, maybe. But yeah, I have been working on this house almost non-stop since my closing date. And it's, uh, it really, it never gets old because there's a new challenge every day and I learn a new skill every day. And the stuff that I'm doing, I am not remodeling this place by any stretch. I am preserving it and I am doing everything I can to um, just kind of uh, keep the cost down. So I'm spending more time, actually I'm spending more time on some things just preserving them than I would if I were to simply outright replace them. For example, all my windows, and I've mentioned this before, but all of my windows are still original and they will remain so for as long as I own the house. I've repaired 12, 12 complete windows, um, all of them needing all the paint removed, well, not all of it, but just remove any loose paint, any um, glazing compound, and uh, you know, I had to replace some glass that I broke in the process, as it sometimes will happen. You know, just stuff like that, and, and that's really all I'm doing. I'm not going crazy and buying all new windows, because I just don't believe in that. I don't believe that's the right answer, you know? So we're going to take this motor apart, starting with the screws that hold the cage on. And they, in this motor, they also hold the motor together. So we're going to unscrew these. Making sure to um, not lose any of this hardware. Making sure not to lose any hardware. I'm noticing there's a lot of uh, washers on these bolts. Which is unnerving. It tells me that somebody's probably had a part before and didn't know what the hell they were doing. The manufacturer certainly didn't use all of these washers. But we'll put those in the, in the dish here. Um, it's a little disconcerting. I don't like to see that because it tells me that some hardware may not be original. Yeah, there's a stack of washers on these. That is not right. Somebody's been in here and had a little fun. Yeah, these are not OEM. I know that, oh my god, what was it, like 37 washers on that one? Right there? I mean, anyway. 
Who did this to you? Poor thing. And they're not even the same size washer. They're just sort of a, a washer salad. Take a look at this. All different sizes. It's like Ace Hardware took a dump on this thing. That's a good sign. Shroud off. Getting the uh, blades off is sometimes, it's like a tavern puzzle. Sometimes they're a little easier than others. Sometimes you have to really know which motions to make. You gotta remember when you reassemble this, this is all gonna be freshly painted. You don't wanna scratch anything. I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just unscrew the blade on the shaft. And we're just going to slide it off. A little set screw holding that. There we go. And sometimes, if you take the blade off like that, and you can just get a better, better look at it. You have to do some voodoo magic here. There we go. There we go. That's how you do it. Okay. I'm going to put the acorn nuts back onto these bolts so they don't get misplaced. If you've ever misplaced hardware on, an, on a project like this, you know how much of a nightmare it can be to replace that hardware. This bolt is actually slightly bent. So this has been a part. Somebody, somebody's really had their fun. But I did mention, yeah, the simplified electrics of this fan make it a lot easier to deal with because it's only two wires going to the motor. This particular fan, instead of using multiple coils that are switched in the, in the motor, where it switches off and on parts of the stator to adjust the speed, uh, this particular unit has what's called a speed coil in the base. And that speed coil is a, let's just call it a, it just varies the resistance of the current going to the motor, depending on switch position. So it, it makes it easier to rewire a unit like this. The other thing that, make, that I like about speed coil fans is that when you're replacing the head wire, you don't have to go looking for a, um, a special three or four wire, um, you know, replacing three or four wire uh, head wire. And, it, and the reason that makes it a lot easier to, or why I like that so much is because it gives you more of a variety and choice for the wire that you use for the head wire. So, so what I'm getting at is, um, nowadays, in fact this is more recent than ever, but you can buy replacement wiring for old appliances that actually looks vintage. It's the braided uh, rayon uh, wire that they sell. It's mainly for, 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 for lighting and stuff, but you can use it on appliances as well. But it comes in a variety of styles and sizes. But when you are looking for something like three or four wire um, stock for your head wire, it's almost impossible to find it in anything but black or you can find it at all. So let's take a look at the wiring in the base here. So now we're we're starting the disassembly. We're getting into this thing, and now it's the time to do it. So you'll notice that uh, here is our how it's wired. This is our oh my! So, so <laughs> look at this. This handle is is hot. Um, <laughs> if if this breaks off, this little plastic tab, you're getting shocked. It's not, well, it's not on the hot side, but when it's when the switch is closed, it is energized, so. Oh man, okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just undo one of these here. So it looks like this, so we got one that's, one wire that's black, 
Okay. And then one that has a little pound, a little checks in it. So we need to make sure that we document that the black one on the motor on the switch end goes to the switch handle. I'm going to write that down right here. BK for black. Okay. And then the other one is, is going to be uh, whatever. So I'm going to put these brass pieces of hardware back where they came from so we don't lose them. And then so this white one, this is probably our neutral. Okay, because neutral is unswitched generally. You generally switch hot. Not neutral. Okay, these washers. So we're gonna take our neutral and I'm gonna write N on there somewhere so I don't I don't get it mixed up. And this wire is going to slide right out just like that. Cool. So I think this is our neutral uh, lead. Our neutral lug, I mean. It's not marked on the base. Grab that mark right here. So this is our hot, because hot is switched. And H. Got those marked off. Now we're going to ditch the power cord. We don't really want it on there anymore because it's just in our way. Okay, so we'll get that out of there. And see, they, yeah, this is all, there's no grommet in here. Somebody rewired this and they did a hilariously bad job. I, I've, I've seen worse. I have seen worse. But this is not pretty. We're going to get some nice. Reproduction cloth wire. Okay. Now that we got that part done, this head wire is almost salvageable, honestly. It's not really in bad shape. It is cloth. It's not brittle, though. It's not cracking under my fingers. So that's a good thing. Right, let's see if we can get this motor uh, come apart. We're gonna have to remove the gearbox cover on the bottom. I've never seen one with a cover on the bottom like this. But we're gonna remove that, and that should let us disconnect the oscillating arm. Here, we go. here, in pretty good shape. Not no rust or anything. This fan is likely used indoors. Now there's a little third clip you need to remove. Okay. Let's that off. Now this we if we lose this, this is a wire third clip. I've never seen a wire one before, but we could replace it if in a pinch with a. Um, of the modern C clip, but that would be a sacrilege. Okay, now this cover is going to come off, but that wire has to go through the hole, so we got to be real careful. We don't want to tear any wires off the, off the coil. Let's see, let's just look at that. Oh boy, yeah, this wire is in really bad shape. Okay, it's worse than I thought. Okay, so here we go. We're running this cable through. Right. Now, the thing about this fan is it is made entirely from cast alloy of some kind, and that's going to make painting it difficult. But that's okay. We have a, we have a plan for that too. Okay. Now these shims, these little. Thin, thin metal shims. These are important. You want to make sure they go back where they came off. This is a, this is a thrust washer, and they're used to shim the the motor shaft during assembly. Um, so I don't want to lose those or forget where they go. Let me just put them right back on the shaft for now. 
Now, when you're taking apart an old fan like this, it's always a good idea to run your fingernail along the bearing uh, surfaces, or the surfaces that ride on the bearings. They're gonna feel a little coarse, but what you're really looking for is you, you wanna make sure there's no heavy gouging. This one's in really good shape. You can see that the front bearing is actually in better shape. This is where they wear the most. Uh, the front bearings, especially if the blade is a little bit off balance, uh, this is where they usually wear the most, and fortunately that's where fan manufacturers would beef up the, uh, the bearing construction, or you'd have a better oiling mechanism. The back bearing on this one is usually greased either by an oil cup, which it, it actually does have one on the top there, a little oil port. But often they're, I know that on the GE Vortilexes, the rear bearing is actually lubricated by the grease in the gearbox. So the oil is designed, is supposed to separate out of the grease and work its way into the shaft or into the, into the uh, bronze bearing and keep it lubricated. That's often um, because most people don't change the grease in their gearboxes every so many years. You do get a lot of wear and tear there as well. But usually uh, if you get a lot of rattling in the blade, um, this, is, this is why they just didn't paint it. So we've got the, we've got the uh, rotor or armature out. Now with this one, we've got to be real careful uh, when we start pulling the wire. So unfortunately, yeah, okay. I think, I think, we, can, I think we can get this done pretty easily. All right, I did mention that the uh, front bearing does come off, but there are four nuts. Holding it, holding it back. So we're going to have to um, take those off. Let's see. Can't get my fingers in there. Maybe I can. Yeah, I'll use a needle nose pliers. We're going to take that bearing off. Always put, if a nut and a screw come off together, they go back together when you put the parts into the parts bin. That's a rule. I want to caution you guys, if you're going to be using any paint strippers on your antique fans, um, to make sure that you do not get that paint stripper onto the windings. Um, the reason for that is the windings are coated in an enamel that is dielectric, and if that enamel ever gets damaged or removed, you have basically a dead short in the coil, and you could seriously damage, um, permanently damage the coil if you ever plug it back in again. Bad times could be had by all, and smoke might even happen. So again, we're taking these screws out of the front bearing and we are putting them into our parts bin. Now, I know where these go. If you have a hard time with that, always uh, look into, like you need to get yourself a lunch tray or something. You know, old cafeteria trays are very good for separating out parts and projects like this one. I like working on old fans. They're one of the they're they're one of the few antique appliances that you can really use on a daily basis in a modern society. They actually work quite well. The thing is, these old fans were built at a time when there was no air conditioning. These were the air conditioning of their time. They were very expensive, often quite expensive uh, for the average consumer to buy. So they're usually very well made, better than anything today course, as with many things, but, um, so yeah, the quality is there, and the functionality. I don't know what I just knocked over, but I see one of my washers there, and, oh, this goes to one of those, I'm going to save that too. Now I, what I need to do is I need to remove the oil port, there are washers inside this thing. Oh, okay. 
They must have come from the uh, bearing cap, the bearing hole. So we're going to knock this off and try to use the handle of my. That. This bearing looks fantastic. It's an oil oil light bearing made of bronze, porous bronze. It says AC Delco stamped right into it. We've got the uh, oil wick right there. This will clean up nice. I still have some washers that fell into this thing, so I gotta worry about that. Okay. Now to get the motor off. We're going to Marty McFly ourselves into the future for a second and I'm going to show you how this um, this head joint works and what's wrong with it. Uh, so essentially what we have here um, is a pretty convoluted system that involves the use of probably top-notch materials for the time but they were very primitive and very poorly made. We have these two pieces, one on either side slide in through the through this hole here. There's one on this side, one on this side. You'll notice something is obviously wrong. This is designed to, it, it was actually made in two pieces that when sandwiched together, they lock the, uh, the motor housing shaft in position. And they allow it to tilt back and forth, like that. Now the problem is, one of these broke. This one broke because it got stuck or seized into the base. So when somebody tried to tilt the shot, what happened was um, somebody tried to tilt the motor and this was seized into position, which caused it to crack. So these little pieces here broke off. Now, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> So, what are we going to do to fix it? Um, well, I don't know. Um, this still goes in as it's supposed to. And then we got this little guy here that goes in there. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I have a few options, actually. I really do. I have options here. Um, so. There we go. This is how it goes in. And it's still goosenecks. It still tilts and wobbles and weebles. The problem is, I have nothing to screw this one into because they're designed to screw into each other. This screw hole goes near all the way, screws into that one, and this one goes into that one. That's how it's supposed to work. But because one of these is destroyed, I'm going to have to get creative. Now I could actually, I'm thinking about actually making one of these uh, with a 3D printer. I have all the stuff at work to make this happen. And I'm really, really thinking about doing it. Um, it wouldn't take much and with some dense print quality settings, I could make this part probably better than the original using a very dense um, matrix inside and or solid, do it, do it in solid rather than hollow or um, honeycombed. But yeah, if I were to print this solid, out of solid PLA, um, I would have, because I can actually copy this, see they're the exact same part. There's no difference, they're the same part. So I have, I have a Xerox of what we, what's supposed to be over here. I could design this probably in, um, the only one I know how to use is Tinkercad, but I, I could definitely make something um, that replaces one of these, and then I would have something to sandwich it together with. Fortunately, this little wing nut here is what keeps it from moving. So, th so under normal use, this basically keeps it from, it's, it's actually clamping it together. So we actually don't really need to do anything at all. Um, we can just put it back together. I could use some epoxy or something to, to cement it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm not really that worried. What, me worry? So that's how that goes together and that's why 
that's the only thing uh, that we have wrong with it. Another okay, so here's where I'm at. And I'm telling you right now, now that I have like an actual shop to work in and I have tools and ways to lay things out, I could never do a job like this in my condo. It just, there's no freaking way. No way. I could never have done this in the condo. So here's where we're at. I took all the little fragments I had and I glued them together with Loctite um, super glue gel. I love this stuff. It's great. One of the best super glues I've ever used. Epoxy would be nice, but it's a little messier and kind of harder to deal with. So what I've done is I have uh, taken this, these little fragments of the retaining, what you call this, a re retaining lug or slug, and I've reassembled it partly. And I found that after reassembling it, it didn't fit into the uh, into the neck. It just didn't fit. It was too big because the structure of the metal has ex it's expanded. It's like it's corroding internally and it's gotten bigger and developed fractures and stress cracks everywhere. So it didn't quite fit. So I used my bench grinder and gingerly, gingerly ground it down on the areas that wouldn't, that were interfering. So now it fits in here and now I can take this doohickey and I can put it together again. I can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So if I put the, the neck back on the motor, like so, I can then, let's see, this one goes on the, on the left hand side, so I can just slide this piece right in and reassemble the unit just as it's supposed to go and it locks it just fine there we go careful um, and that is how I met your mother let's move on to further disassembly and we're gonna Marty McFly our way into the future for a sec and I'm gonna show you how this uh, gooseneck or, or Okay, so what we have here is the motor and stator assembly. I have tried unsuccessfully to remove the stator from the housing. I don't want to go any further because I run the risk of damaging the stator and that would be a travesty. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff a rag up inside this motor housing. or a couple of paper towels. And what this is going to do is it's going to protect the delicate enamel on the stator windings from the, the dosage of uh, paint stripper that I'm going to be using. Damaging those windings would total out the fan. It's not worth the cost of having the motor rewound. I mean, unless you know how to do that and you can just do it in your house. I'm not equipped to do such a thing. And I said again, uh, paint stripper would do exactly what it's designed to do and that's remove paint, which is of course the only thing protecting this fan from turning into a fireball when plugged in. Just a very thin layer of paint on the bare copper winding wire. So we don't want to do that. We don't care about the wire that's coming out of the motor because we're going to replace that in a little bit. But we're going to get this tucked up in there so that when the... It's also going to serve to protect it from the paint as well that we're going to apply to this motor housing. But this way, paint stripper can't drip anywhere near the stator. Then what we're going to do is we're going to apply some paint stripper. Now the paint stripper that I'm using is from a spray can. It's very, very super awful smelling and toxic and nasty and gross. Um, so we're going to just be careful with that. There it is. It's also very expensive. Um, I thought I bought a oh, there it is. 
This is the uh, the aircraft remover stuff that I used on my Suzuki project. Um, I hate this stuff. It smells awful. It's twenty dollars a can. Not exactly cheap. But we're gonna just apply it and let it do its thing. And already you can see the paint is starting to bubble off. We're going to do the same thing with the blade set and the motor housing, and the back of the motor housing. Now you'll notice I haven't taken the gearbox apart yet because I'm not there at this time. I'm not ready to do that. So we're going to spray the gearbox to get the rest of the paint off of that. Now you'll notice the stuff forms a slight gelatinous coating. And uh, that's good because it doesn't evaporate immediately after application. This is a good thing. But this stuff is expensive. Um, but the paint is just sloughing right off. It doesn't take much. As for the motor, how or the the base of the fan, we're going to be um, we're going to have to do something a little bit clever with that because I don't want to damage the precious data plate. So what I'm probably going to do, and I haven't figured this out quite yet, the thing is, even masking tape doesn't help, because masking tape can even pull the print right off of this aluminum plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to try to punch these out. I apply a little bit of pressure to the back side of the rivet, a little bit of percussive therapy. Yeah, I counted it right out. And I want to save that rivet because I'm going to put it back. Put that in our little parts bin. Do the same thing to the other one. Okay. Okay, it, it, it backed out quite a bit, so we're on a roll. Just gonna put a little bit. There we go. Save that rivet. There it is. Okay. Now we got one more little one, a little guy. Notice how this this is all from the paint stripper. It, it, it a little overspray got on my screwdriver and it can So this one is recessed in a little bit. I'm not gonna have as much luck getting it off. So I'm gonna need something much thinner. I can kind of go in that little hole. Here we go. So let's get that. data plates off. All rivets are saved, they can be cleaned up and glued back in. Isn't modern technology wonderful? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and spray down the base, but I want to clean up some tools. I don't want to ruin all my tools. With all this room to work now, it has a little bit of an organizational scheme going on, but I don't. Spray that down. So this fan has been painted at least once after it was built. Um, it's pretty obvious uh, that it's definitely been painted before. Um, but they didn't bother to do any, any uh, cleanup. They just douched it with paint and that was it. So at this point, this paint should be pretty much ready to come off. Oh yeah, there's, there's nothing there, nothing to it. But this thing, I'll be able to basically hose it off. I mean, it's yeah, just let that really get in there, get it all nice and built up. This stuff is not nearly as unpleasant to work with as the stuff I used to buy. I believe I used to use a Rust-Oleum product. 
and it would send you clear across the room from the fumes. The stuff isn't so bad. I start seeing dancing elephants and I know I've gotten too close to the sun. And that's how you that's how you do it. As for the uh, the commutators, not the commutator, but the rotor, um, we're not gonna do anything with this. We're just gonna clean it up uh, with some quadruple grade steel wool. We're gonna clean up both ends and keep the shims exactly where we have them. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Paint just comes right off, just like, just, just like, look at that. Just wipe it right off. Just, oh, ew. This stuff burns your skin too. Just as an FYI. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Now you might be thinking, okay, so I stripped the paint off, I found a color I want to use, but hold the phone, it's an aluminum surface, or it's caught metal, or whatever. Um, what do I do? How do I paint this without it just, the paint just coming right off? Well, that's where your friend, uh, that stuff called um, self etching primer comes in. You can use self etching primer to get paint onto this metal. I've done it before with okay results. I'm doing the fan blades. You can't see it, it's off camera, but I'm spraying down the fan blades. I'm going to get those ready. All right, so we're going to continue on with some of the cleanup work before we move on to the next video. But what I'm doing now is I'm uh, just polishing my shaft. There we go. Oh, yeah. Nice and shiny. Let's take a look at uh, how much progress I've made. So this is the data plate, and it's cleaned as best as I'm going to get it without really starting to ruin it. Okay. Delco Appliance, Division of General Motors, Rochester, New York. Model 1700. Okay. And here's the rest of it. So, you've already seen the armature. Here are the blades. Now check this out. These were painted black, and you'll notice that the hub of the blade assembly is brass. How cool is that? And that was very common back then. They would actually paint brass because they weren't, they wanted it to look modern. But brass was the material that they had already spec for the blade set all the way back until whenever they started making these damn things. But as time moved on, polished brass hardware on consumer appliances wasn't really that much of a thing anymore. So they would just paint it black. It's a beautiful blade set. And you'll look at how they balanced it back then. They just used a router. Now, whether that's factory or not, I don't know. That could have been something that somebody had done, but that's awfully deliberate, you know? It looks like it was done deliberately, so I, I think that was done at the factory, but look at that. Such a beautiful blade set. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably leave that unpainted. And this is the cover for the gearbox. Now, this is, um, this is plated, looks like plated steel. Yeah, it's chromed and then and then it was painted. I'm gonna try to polish this up and see what it looks like, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, I might leave that alone. Now, the real heavy pitting is on the base. You'll notice that all around the perimeter here, it's really pitted. So I'm gonna do my best to clean this up, maybe with a wire wheel and or some, maybe some sandpaper. But I'm also going to sand it, prime it, sand it, prime it, sand it, prime it until it's nice and smooth. And I can get a nice good coat of paint on that thing. And here is the motor. i got to get a little more paint off of that. And that goes right in there. 
So this, unfortunately, it got really wet in the process, so I'm letting it dry off um, in direct airflow. This is made. This is the only thing on the entire fan that's made of steel, and uh, the whole thing is is actually it's pretty neat how they made it, but it's pressed steel. Um, I'd love to see the machine that made that, <laughs> and it's thick too. That's like probably what. 10 gauge, maybe maybe 10 gauge, maybe 8 gauge steel. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so this is going to be, uh, we're gonna, we want this to completely dry before we move on to our next step, which is painting. I'm gonna have to do some more cleanup with a smaller brush here. We'll, we'll, get that, we'll get that all looking nice. Now this, we don't have to do anything special to, but we are going to get some uh, primer on there. Um, because it is steel, it will take paint pretty easily. The uh, the cast components, unfortunately, won't take paint without some additional prep work. I'm going to try to get away with um, self-etching primer. We are going to leave some parts unpainted. For example, this um, we're going to get this gearbox apart soon, and this is going to be put in after the paint job. So that'll be brass. And uh, these screws, oh, those are steel screws, so we're gonna leave those, we're gonna paint those. Now, generally, I like to reassemble these first and then paint them because they come out better that way, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And that's it for today. Um, thank you all for watching. This is, yeah, this is the, <laughs> that's moisture damage right there. Is a cutie. Yes, you are, Oreo. Yes, yes, you are. Oh, and Tommy, you peek. Who's that hiding? All right, so I did a little more cleaning. I, I just ordered um, all the parts I need to put this fan together. Um, I got some uh, Rust-Oleum aluminum primer, which is supposed to be, I've never never used it, never used it before, so I figured we'll give it a whirl. Um, I got some wiring. I got some uh, some round gold rayon coated wire. And I've got, what else? I think that was it, that's all I bought. So we're gonna use that to get this fan back together. Um, I then cleaned up some more of these parts with the wire wheel. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put some fan wick in there. So I've already gone ahead and taken the, uh, the oil cup part cleaned it out, I took the spring, the, uh, the fan wick retainer, and I went ahead and cleaned that, removed the old fan wick, and now we're going to fit it with some new fan wick. Oil wick, I keep calling it fan wick, it's just oil wick. But it has to be able to fit through this little hole, which it does. Good. Okay. Insert it into the spring and thread it in, like so. Any spots that I missed, uh, it's going to pick up on. That's fine. I just thread that in, like so. We're going to leave plenty of extra, and uh, it's going to be cut right about there. clean cut. So when it goes into this oil cup, it should be nice and spring loaded. We're going to trim this down a little bit. Um, actually, quite a bit. <laughs> I'm going to cut a little bit more off. I should have just taken the old one out and measured it. But I, I 
neglected to do so. Now, on, so on the Vortilex that I have, um, I believe the fan wick actually only connects to, or only contacts. So let's talk about how this this uh, front bearing is set up. It's kind of interesting how they did it. So it's designed to allow the oil to wick straight up to the motor shaft, which helps spread it around the inside of the bearing. Any excess oil is wiped off and it runs down through either of these two drain channels. There's one on the front, one on the back. There's two little holes. Those are drain channels which allow oil that spills over the bearing. So if it spills over the front, it drains into this little channel here. If it drill, uh, f overflows from the back, it drips into this rear channel and it flows back to the oil cup. It's quite interestingly engineered. Um, not something you'd expect in a, in a consumer appliance. And I cut that a little too short, um, but that's okay because it's adjustable. <laughs> so all I got to do is pull a little bit more out of here. Just like so. Because it should poke out. It should poke out through the um, into the uh, into the shaft where the shaft goes. It should be visible. Yeah, there we go. So you don't want you don't want too much wick into the, the into the bearing assembly. You just want enough to touch the uh, the motor shaft. And you can put, stick a screwdriver in there, push it down, make sure it springs back up again. And that's how you know you've you've done your job. So for now, we're going to leave this without any oil, and, and that's that. I'm going to cut a new piece. I don't like how this looks. I'm going to just we're going to just cut another piece. It's starting to fray a little bit. It's made out of um. It's basically just felt, really, and uh, so it's not the, not the most durable substance on planet Earth, but it does the job okay. All right, so I'm going to push it back through, maybe a little extra there. Okay, we can make our adjustments later. Yeah, that should be fine right there. But yeah, we're not going to fill this with any oil until after we've um, we've gone and painted everything, so we don't want to do that just yet. Okay, that's way too much fan wick. We're going to trim it just a little bit at a time. We get it just right. If I say fan wick, I really just mean oil wick. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect right there. That'll do her. That'll do her. Okay. Well, we're basically ready for paint at this point, but I can't paint anything until I have my painting supplies. So we're going to pick up later on and uh, see how that goes. But before we go, I've actually gone and taken the hardware and I've cleaned it all up with my, uh, my bench grinder with, how, with a wire wheel attachment. So all these nuts and bolts are nice and cleaned up. Um, they should thread on and off just, just, uh, just so. Still need to take care of this hardware here. And yes, I am working on um, setting up a 3D printer to reproduce my broken um, gooseneck uh, or neck um, pivot. So I'm going to try to make a new one of those out of plastic, but it's not that critical. It'll reassemble just fine without doing that, but I'd like to, you know, show the extra mile. Okay, so I've just cracked open the gearbox to get a look at what's inside. I'm not surprised by what I'm seeing. Actually, I am delightfully and delightfully surprised at how good it is. Um, 
you take a look in there, it's clearly uh, full of peanut butter. Now, some of that is just grease mixed with the water that I used. And uh, that's all it is. But it's, it's really not, yeah. It's not cool, um, it's not good. But it's, it's actually quite gross. Um, but we gotta clean all of this stuff out. Now one of the methods that I found that to be pretty effective in doing that is to stick this in a hot oven <laughs> upside down and just let it melt away. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm not 23 and stupid anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to undo a couple of set screws. There's one right here. And that's going to allow us to, uh, to drive this retaining screw out. So we're going to pull this out. This is one of the parts that was brass that was painted originally and we're going to leave it brass. Um, there's a lot of that in the, this fan here. So we're going to take that out. Then we're going to drive out the worm gear. Okay. It looks like the worm gear comes out at an angle. We're going to drive it out, drive it through the hole, and then lift it up. Uh, we might actually. I got to get the, um, the oscillator gear out. Some washers in here. Come out there. We go. Get that washer out of there. Now the um, the oscillator clutch is exactly as you would expect on a fan from this time period. Um, it's just a friction clutch in there. Um, Looks like it has got, got a sacrificial gear, potentially made of nylon. Is this uh... No, huh? Doesn't come out. Okay. Looks like it's made of, maybe not nylon, but a lot of them are made from the, that phenolic resin stuff. And that's the gear that's driven by the worm. And it's designed to break uh, if it were to ever contact anything. And consequently, consequently, they can break during disassembly very easily. So you want to watch out for that. Now, this doesn't just slide out. No. No, that's not going to happen. There's probably a retaining clip inside there. But I'm trying to find a way to get this gear off without destroying it in the process. And work it off a little bit on your side. No. The thing is, you really don't want to do anything that could harm that gear. Because you will never, ever find a replacement on something like a Delco fan, where they're not as common as the GEs and the Emersons. Uh, finding parts like that gear will be next to impossible if they are ever gone and gotten damaged. So, just a little word to the wise. Be careful. Be really careful. I'm going to clean this with engine degreaser before I go any further because I'm just making a mess. And uh, So we're going to get some engine degreaser. We're going to clean it up. Then we're going to gingerly disassemble it with the utmost care. 
Okay, so I got the money gear out, and I call it the money gear because if it goes bad or gets damaged, lost, or broken, it's going to cost you some serious money to get it replaced. Uh, it's actually in really good shape. These are often almost destroyed on oscillating fans. This is like the, um, this is designed to fail for safety reasons, to protect the motor, to protect the user. Um, it's designed to wear out and break uh, if the thing is ever stuck. But once that gear is out, we can slide the um, this pinion gear out here. And uh, this one is usually pretty well put. This is usually made of brass. Appears to have ah, oh, this one's got an yeah, it's got a fiber gear on it as well. Yeah, the one that's driven by the worm gear on the on the motor shaft is also fiber. This one's, this one's got two sacrificial gears, money gear, sacrificial gear, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it that because literally on a fan like this old Delco, you'll never get parts for it. Um, it's, they just weren't as, as common. You know, GE Vortilexes can be had a dime a dozen in the junk shops, you know, in, in, in you know, poor condition parts, uh, you know, restorable condition. So you're not really SOL if, uh, if you break something on a Vortilex, but you break something on a Delco or, a, you know, certain uh, less common brands, and you're in for a world of hurt. We're just going to kind of scrape out any any any, uh, any chunks of grease. Um, you know, this grease is no longer usable. Uh, it's just turned to chowder. So just going to kind of scrape it off. Now, what do we replace it with? Uh, from what I've been reading, molybdenum grease. Wheel bearing grease is often used. But what you don't want to use, you don't want to use Vaseline. You know, you don't want to use white lithium grease. You don't want to use any of that crap. No, that's not what that's that's not the right thing to do. Because what this grease also does is what it's also doing is the oils in the grease that are suspended in the grease. They work their way onto the hot motor shaft and they seep into the rear bearing. And that is how the rear that's how the rear of the motor is lubricated on some fans. On this one, it has what looks to be a sponge around the uh, oil light bronze bearing and is lubricated via this oil port here. Well, yeah, another method of cleaning these gearboxes, I, I, I was really only joking about the hot stove, but if you were to put this in boiling water, that grease will, will melt and it will rise to the surface um, and it'll clean it very nicely. I've done that before too. All very legitimate methods. Now how this shaft is put in, we're not going to be taking the shaft out. This is pretty common on a lot of these old fans, in modern ones especially. But it feels nice and smooth, I'm not going to worry about it. But this shaft is slid in to the casting and then they apply the, um, the oscillating arm and then they press it in place. And you can see that it's, it's clearly pressed and there's no way I'm going to get that off without damaging something. So we're going to leave it alone. We're going to leave well enough alone. Um, a few shots of oil down that shaft, it'll free it up, make it nice and smooth again. So I am not concerned at all about that. So. Now I just noticed this little ball bearing. Where the hell did it come from? <laughs> I don't know where it goes, where it came from, how it got there. It fits nicely right here, but I'm sure that's not where it belongs. Um, that's a concern. I'll have to figure that one out in a later time. 
That's cool. Don't know what it's for, don't know where it came from, but it's uh, found a safe place, so. That's curious. It's not part of this. Nope. All right, well, we'll figure that out. Well, until then, folks, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you for watching. Next time you see me, uh, we'll be uh, reassembling and painting this van.